All right, I'm gonna attempt to video the reassembly or the assembly of this guy. Uh, there's a half moon shape there. You kind of line that up with that. And that locks in there and the stubs hold it from moving. I've got about that much clearance on the manual adjust. If I wanted to, I could cut a hole on the other side, uh, which my propane tank's on the other side here, and do the manual adjust. Um, but I'm not gonna do that today. This guy has four bolts. Uh, two bolts are already in and there's two with holes. The two with holes uh, need to line up in here and they need to be able to um, be this way. Just about like that. Sits on there. And then there's these two bolts here that have um, slotted connections. And they'll slide all the way in here in theory. And go into the unit, the aluminum unit here. And we got my screwdriver. And we will just kind of hand tighten this. Okay. That's, that's in there pretty snug. And so the motor unit is attached to the drive unit in the gear reduction, which is then attached to the unit that goes up and down. So that's all set. It could still just slide out. So um, there's this other part here, set of parts, which I'm going to attempt to match up with the other side and there's a spacer here that looks like it has a little lip and I'm guessing the lip will go all the way in let's see here and that's a negative there's no room for that to go in so that lip will have to go on this side And there's a small bolt here that I'm not quite sure. Yeah, that might fit in there. So maybe it goes like this. Huh. That's a weird fit. I've got a bolt, two two washers. Oh, there's a there's a bolt like that too. I bet that goes in there somewhere and holds it all in. And just comparing the other side. Honestly, the other one's loose. <laughs> so there's nothing really holding this in. Um, I'm not sure what these components are for. Uh, they came with it. I, you know what? These are probably for the bar that you're supposed to have up here that goes across. Uh, the bar goes into these holes here, this one and the other one. And um, I guess that's what holds it from coming out. So I may have to cut a little small section of the bar. Let's take a look at this bar real quick. See how it would fit. If I decided to use it. So, uh, you know, obviously I can't use the bar. But it fits on there just fine. Um, and, I, and without putting the bolts in, I'll show you. You know, it's running off the other one right now. So there's no reason why you can't hook these both up, leave the bar down here somewhere, and in an emergency, if one of the motors dies, put the string to bar in there. Um, I'm going to have to figure, I'm thinking this bolt possibly goes in here. Um, and it holds this in, but uh, yeah, probably on the fat side of it. 
and then that may it, it all lines up so I don't have access to that side right now because it's it's an upside down it's it's not quite there so I could try to turn it I suppose um, which I can do real quick I've got a gizmo here and a small makeup I took a uh, this was a uh, what size is this five eighths it's a it's a spark plug um yeah it's a five eighths spark plug remover socket and i just grind it off a couple of holes there so that this will fit in there and then uh this one though i have a problem with the, the size of it i have to be careful that i don't and that's a little smaller than it. oh it's because of the the end of that plastic thing for some reason anyway goes in like that and then I can in theory unfortunately it's it's over a little bit it's probably because the motor's in there it wasn't wasn't nearly oh no I got it now I did it. Now I got it in there. Now I gotta turn it. There we go. When the motor wasn't in there, then it it wasn't a problem. But it's now not only turning the uh, shaft, but also turning the motor. So now, if I put this in here, we take this. And thread this in, and in theory, that'll hold everything in there. No, I need to have Phillips. It's not the best Phillips, but it might work. It's interesting, that little piece of plastic is just right there. To get a better Phillips head and try to get that all the way in, and then possibly this is really close. Yeah, that works too. That might even be better. And it's a lock nut, so that will keep that on there. Um, I think I might do just a little regular nut on there first, just to tighten it all up. And that plastic gizmo is in the way there. That's holding it kind of all in. Really kind of a goofy arrangement. Maybe instead of using a lock nut, I'll just tighten these two together like that. I still got to get this piece in there. So that's kind of it. I'll play with it a little more. Um, between, between the two of those, it should hold the, uh, the rubber from coming out. And that holds the whole thing in there. So if I try to pull on it right now, it's not, it's not coming out. But you can see it wiggles. That's kind of the design of the goofy thing. It's... It's uh, even the other one that I have on the other side, it wiggles a little bit, uh, just a goofy design. Um, the only way to really secure it would be to maybe run a big C-clamp over it. Um, I don't really think of it, you know, you could try running zip ties, that's probably not going to hold very long, but it's maybe a C-clamp, if you got it in the right place, maybe right across here. But uh, that's how it's designed, so maybe you just leave it, you know, and it works good enough. So I'll be working on um, uh, getting this one screw back in, tightening these up, and then I'm going to work on the electrical on the switch, and I'll be back.